happy Cinco de Mayo, guys. Hopefully you're enjoying your, your uh, burritos and tacos and enchiladas and whatever else to go along with it. Margaritas and Mexican Cervantes beer, which I don't drink alcohol, but I understand the culture and the history of that. But really diving into the history beyond Cinco de Mayo, uh, not many people know this, but, you know, conquistadors did leave descendants. And the most baddest of them all, well, they're, they're really bad, like bad, bad, or bad to the bone, would be Hernando Cortez de Monroy, who was later granted the title, the first Marquis of Wakana. He would marry Juana de Zuniga or Juana Ramirez de Riano and would have numerous children with him and descendants in Italy, Mexico, United States, including Puerto Rico, as well as other parts of Central America to pursue, like Guatemala, m maybe even uh, Canada, I would say. Uh, well, his legitimate descendant male line would die out really quickly by his great-grandson, and his great-granddaughter would marry into a uh, dynasty. So how would I know about this? Why do I care about Orlando Cortez de Monroy, the butcher of Mexico? They call him, you know, with La Mancha, who is the whore of, of Mexico, the Indian who gave the Aztec Empire to Spain. I'm not trying to be politically correct, but that's what they would say it in Mexico. I'm not going to say it here, but it is what it is in Spanish, but it's very highly known in Central America and in Spain. So why is that case? Why do I care about Hernando Cortez de Manuel? Well, he happens to be my 14th great-grandfather. Hernando Cortez de Manuel, first son, the illegitimate son was Martin Cortez with La Mancha. But he had another child before. He had a daughter named Catalina Pizarro, who, who he named after his own mother when make Francisco Pizarro and Hernando Cortez second cousins. Catalina Pizarro was the illegitimate or hija natural of Hernando Cortez in Cuba, Santiago de Cuba, and Leonor Pizarro. Bernardo Diaz de Castillo states that Leonor Pizarro was a mestiza, but she looked more Castilian than anything else. Interesting enough, she herself was an illegitimate daughter. To Francisco Pizarro. And how do I know that? Because Francisco Pizarro came with Friar Nicholas de Avendo in 1502 to the New World. He replaced Columbus as governor of the Indies, and that happened. That's after Bobadilla was killed. So, um, the state, yeah, I'm a descendant of Hernando Cortez de Mendoza. There's other, another document of another branch of my family, which is in Cuba, that states that Doña Francisco Cortez was from the same branch. Her sister, daughter, got married in 1666 in Cuba, and another daughter was mentioned in the Parmesan as being a descendant of Hernando Cortez. So I would presume that's the legitimate branch. Um, marked Hernando Cortez married Juana de Zuniga, Juana Ramirez de Riano, who was a daughter of a Duke, or a count, excuse me, a count, and uh, they had numerous children. Martin Cortez y Ramirez de Oriana, or his amiga, married his cousin and had a daughter named Francisca, and I believe Francisca is the same one who made Jorge de Manzon, a son of a public scribe to the Audencia of Santo Domingo. Uh, they're mentioned in a book in Potosi as mestizos, but as Don and Doña Hildagos. So, that's interesting. Uh, just to let you guys know, so you have that. Yeah, so I descend from not just Cortez, but other conquistadors, uh, Pizarro, Pedro de Alvarado. There's another document of my eighth grade uncle, Friar Juan Lorenzo Sanchez de Matos y Colón. He states that he descends from Christopher Columbus, from his family, the descendants of the family of Christopher Columbus, their, their son Diego, as well as El Italo Don Pedro de Alvarado, who was the El Italo, the, oh my gosh, I'm going to screw it up, Tani Pico, which was uh, in Honduras, 
um, interesting to mention, Peter the Arado had a child, uh, several children, uh, illegitimate with Donia Lucia Consequento, who was the princess of a part of the allies that came with, with Cortez to conquer the Aztecs. Peter the Arado would fall on a horse, his horse would fall on him and kill him, or he fell on the horse and killed him, leaving his illegitimate or natural daughter, a mestiza named Doña Leonora de Alvarado, a consequential to be the heir to her father. Her brother, one was killed in sea, the other one was killed in South America, and the other one supposedly drowned in a river. So you have all of that. So Pedro de Alvarado's line would go. Oh, why is that so interesting? Because this is called history, and not many people is written that in books, and if it is, it's in Spanish. So, yeah, I'm a descendant of the bad guy, or not the Cortez de Monterrey. So if you like that, whatever. If you don't, whatever. Um, yes, I have other roots in Mexico and in Spain. The last ancestor that left was Juan Perez, and another ancestor, uh, I think his name was Pedro de Guzman. They were both professional soldiers that left the ship that shipwrecked off of Dry Tortugas. In 1648, 200 of the 400 men or half the men survived the shipwreck. They lost all the cargo and all the military weapons. Uh, the men survived, got picked up by another ship, and they would be marrying women either from other countries or other parts of the New World or colonies of Spain and local women from Puerto Rico. And uh, I can trace at least three or four men, four men, they came from the same ship, uh, so that's interesting. You never know. Okay, well, good luck. Uh, fun facts of Hernando Cortez, Francisco Pizarro, and Pedro de Alvarado that not many people know. All three men were together when they conquered the Aztecs, and two of them are second cousins. In fact, uh, it was stated Pizarro was the father in law of Cortez. So. And how do I know that? Like, like I said, uh, the illegitimate daughter, uh, Le uh, Catalina Pizarro, would marry Captain Juan de Salcedo, who came from the Basque region of Spain. I have his uh, passenger record, and states his parents, and also uh, Cortez's will. And uh, he had grandchildren from his first child, or illegitimate daughter. Um, they would marry very good. Their son, Pedro de Salcedo, not confused with Pedro's Journal, which is an incorrect book. It's basically a child's book that of a make-believe teenager who was a cabin boy to Columbus. Pedro de Salcedo would marry very well. He would marry Doña Teresa Lopez, the Legaspi, the daughter of El Hidalgo Don Miguel Lopez de Legaspi, Juana de Gracias. Don Miguel Lopez de Legazpi was El Hidalgo de las Filipinas. He conquered the Philippines in the 1670s and 1680s. Fun fact about him, cause of death, he had a stroke by arguing with somebody and scolding somebody. He would die later that evening. He is buried with his grandson and some of their great-grandchildren in the Cathedral of St. Augustine in Old Metro Manila. Actually, it is in the old part of Estumius, Manila which is a Spanish fort that's there. The first house that was built by the Spaniards was bought by a billionaire Filipino that moved the rock structure into his own area. That home happens to be my 13 great-grandparents' homes, Juan Pacheco Maldonado and his second wife, Doña Teresa Salcedo de Legazpi. Interesting to mention, their daughter, Doña Ana de Salcedo, would take her mother's surname, and perhaps even the Mayorazgo, what I understand, she gave it to her cousin to marry Captain Don Pedro de Arroyo Daza, who was the son of Governor Don Diego de Arroyo Daza and Ana Molina, Herta de Molina. He was governor of a province in Venezuela. He would be my direct ancestor. Meaning, guess what? <laughs> Yeah, I'm a direct descendant of the royal family, which means um, the royal family would come in Puerto Rico in 1704 as a governor. Don Pedro de Arroyo Guerrero and his Belgian wife, 
in Spanish, Ana Maria van Balen or Anne Marie van Miller, who came from uh, Brussels. Uh, I would descend from two of their grandsons, Pedro de Arroyo Guerrero Hermoso II and Loriano de Arroyo Guerrero II. Both men would die, brothers, or men would die days from each other when an epidemic happened in Santo Domingo. Perhaps it could have been leprosy. Uh, yes, I would be a descendant, a direct descendant of both men, or a descendant of one man, a direct descendant of one man, and his other brother would be a descendant, if you want to be politically or, you know, educationally correct. So, that's the part that's very interesting, and uh, do I feel bad? It's history, and there's nothing I can do. It is what it is. That's what happened when you have two countries and two cultures clashing with each other. You have... Spaniards that are very superstitious and went through hell and back with the uh, occupation of over, over almost a thousand years by the Almohads and Arabs invasion of uh, the Iberian Peninsula and their faithful Catholicism and their faith into their Lord Jesus Christ which I understand that being, being uh, a Christian as well but their scaredness of seeing hearts being ripped out is crazy but also knowing that the emperor Montezuma wasn't the best emperor his own people shot at him so knowing that two wrongs don't make a right but it's called history and I love history and history makes the world go around well if you don't like history but you like to go and see the statues the fortresses in the new world or in Asia walk the wall of China whenever you can or just go Places in Europe like the, like the Louvre in Paris or the Tower of London, it's history. It happens. There's nothing you can do about it. I think this cancel culture is somewhat interesting, but they forget, too, that their ancestors were part of it as well. So cancel themselves out as well. I believe that everyone has a right to have their own history. Of course, everyone has a family history as well. Don't repeat history, okay? So that's how I view it. I think there's nothing wrong to preserve things, put it in museums, so for those that want to see it, they should see it, and it should be cultivated. And that's what I believe. And it's history. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't go turn back time or jump on the DeLorean and change time with uh, Doc and Marty. It's not going to work that way. Okay, well, that's my day. I'm going to go and get some uh, Cinco de Mayo food, Mexican food. So, adios amigos. And any questions or comments, please make it positive. Anything that's negative is going to be deleted automatic. Or the comments are going to be turned off. There's nothing thing I can think about it. He is an ancestor, and am I proud of what he did? Yes and no. So, there's your answer. I'm going to be politically correct. Adios amigos.